reactions are coming in. Corporate India was, of course, in full attendance there at that swearing-in ceremony from the Ambani's to the Ruyas. They were all there. We're now joined by uh, one of our industry veterans, Adi Godrej, chairman of the Godrej Group. Mr. Godrej, appreciate you joining us. What are your first reactions on the cabinet formation? The people that we've been speaking to uh, seem to be a tad disappointed because Mr. Modi had held out a promise of a much leaner, meaner uh, cabinet. Uh, um, you know, reorganization of ministries, some would say, has perhaps been a bit arbitrary and unclear at this point in time. Again, even as far as clubbing of portfolios are concerned, for instance, Ravi Shankar Prasad getting law and telecom, Arun Jaitley getting defense and finance, which are two massive portfolios. Your First reactions on what you made of the cabinet formation? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if in where uh, a senior cabinet minister has been given two unconnected portfolios that there would be somebody else inducted in another round. So it could be that, that the person has been given two portfolios temporarily and somebody else might be inducted for one. But the one ministry I haven't seen assigned yet is industry. I didn't see anyone being given the industry ministry. So I'm wondering whether the Prime Minister wants to hold the portfolio himself. Are you aware of well, who is the industry's minister? No, we're, we're not, sir, and you're absolutely right. In fact, that is the surprise that I was talking about, because even if you look at commerce, the commerce portfolio under the UPA was held by uh, party leaders. Anand Sharma uh, was yeah. the commerce minister, uh, yeah. and now we have a position where Nirmala Sita Raman, she's never held a ministry. She's been the BJP spokesperson. She's not a Rajya Sabha member, not even a Lok Sabha member. A minister of state with independent charge gets the commerce portfolio. And we don't have clarity either just yet on the industry ministry. Yeah. Well, Commerce Minister, I'm not very surprised at because I had heard that Mr. Modi wanted external affairs to be very connected with the Commerce Ministry. So perhaps he expects that the Minister of State works in cooperation with the Ministry of External Affairs. But uh, that, again, we have to see how it works out. Speaking of rationalizing ministries, and again, there was a lot of hope that perhaps we could move towards a significant uh, restructuring. But if you look at what's happened, for instance, the talk was that as far as transport is concerned, you would club surface transport, port, shipping, civil aviation, all under one umbrella ministry. But what we now know is that Nitin Gadkari will look after transport uh, and shipping, but uh, you know we'll have the civil aviation ministry going to a TDP ally, Ashok Gajapati. Raju is going to take over civil aviation. Are you disappointed that this uh, idea or thought of clubbing relevant ministries together has perhaps not taken off just yet? Well, I, I think we must remember that whilst uh, the coalition politics is not very important in the case of this government because the BGP has a majority of its own, it does have coalition partners and some of the decisions might be to accommodate uh, some of these partners. So we must remember that whilst I think the accommodation required is nowhere near what the UPA had to do, I think he may still have some pressure on accommodating some of the partners. We must also see what happens in the second round. I think that will be quite important. Okay, we don't know when that second round will take place, but the suggestion seems to be that this is a cabinet under construction. If it is a cabinet under construction, then in terms of numbers or size, it may not actually turn out to be very different or significantly leaner than the UPA because we're already at 45. And if you anticipate that perhaps we are going to see more people being inducted, then it may not hold on to the promise of being much leaner than the UPA, which had 27 cabinet ministers, 11 ministers of state uh, with independent charge and 32 ministers of state, Mr. Godrej. Yes, but it is, it is much leaner than the UPA because the UPA ministry, as I understand it, was about 71. And I yeah. think, I don't think we'll, like, we'll, they'll add more than about five to seven other ministers. So I think it will be much leaner. They have combined, for example, in the UPA, there were two ministries of uh, foreign affairs. Now, of course, it's combined into one. So several ministries have been combined, which is a good move. Perhaps not as well as it may have been done if you look 
that ideal ministry formation. But as I mentioned, there must be some pressure to accommodate some partners. Right. Uh, I also want to get your thoughts, Mr. Godrej, on the energy sector, because again, there was a lot of hope that perhaps as far as the energy ministries were concerned, we could see an integrated ministry, uh, coal, gas, oil, power, all of that coming together. But we now understand that Hello. perhaps that is not going to Hello. be... We now, Mr. Godrej, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah. Yeah. I was asking you about the energy Hello. ministries, sir, because is my voice getting through to you, sir? Yeah, in, in between, yes. Go ahead. Okay, I was, I was asking you about the energy ministries. The thought was that we could perhaps see an integrated energy ministry, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Piyush Goyal gets the power portfolio. Again, Minister of State with independent charge. We understand that uh, Dharmendra Pradhan, a Minister of State with independent charge, would get oil, and we are likely to see perhaps coal uh, being given out to somebody else. So are you a tad disappointed as far as the coal, energy piece is concerned? I thought coal has been assigned to Piyush Goyal. Not sure yet, sir. We, that's what we were given to believe as well, but we're still waiting for I the see. official confirmation well, on whether he gets power and coal. But that's I what we were given to understand be, as well. Tomorrow it will be more clear, but I think they will combine power and coal. That is the sense that we get as well. We're just waiting for the official confirmation on whether that has indeed happened. But Mr. Godridge, you know, the cabinet formation is over. The next big ticket event, as far as this government is concerned, is now going to be the budget in the next six to eight weeks. Uh, what is the expectation on the back of what we've seen so far and on the back of the cabinet that we've now got in place? What is the expectation as far as actual reforms and taking forward business is concerned? Well, I think two or three. Uh, one, I think some of the tax moves which has created a very bad perception of our country, such as the retrospective taxes and some of the tax uh, demands on transfer pricing need to be reversed very quickly. I think that's very important so that foreign investment can flow in well. I think stimulus must be provided. Industrial production is negative stimulus is required and i expect that even if stimulus is provided government revenues won't go down because gdp growth can take care of that so i expect some stimulus in some stimulus announcements in the budget and i think what is also very important is the ease of doing business should be improved very considerably so steps to ensure that things are simplified is what I expect in the budget. All right, Mr. Godridge, we leave it there. Appreciate you joining us with your comments on uh, Mr. Modi's team that has been put in place uh, today.